Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We're all trying to learn uh, the best ways to uh, cook uh, seaweeds because um, actually they're very delicious when they're cooked right as, uh, as um, you would know if you went into a Japanese restaurant. Um, but it's, uh, apart from uh, the actual uh, taste, um, these are just a super food that uh, is a natural local resource and um, it's, uh, it's just so good for your health. Um, since I've been eating um, seaweed as part of my diet, not excessively, but uh, two or three times a week, um, I, I, I just feel so much more energy and I, I, get, I very, very rarely get colds. I haven't had flu for years. So um, these are real, real benefit. Okay, what are you going to have? Well, I'm going to start with the soup. Mm -hmm. And then I think I'm going to go for the seaweed crepes and prawns, but I do want a burger as well, a wakami burger. Yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. It's ages since I have wakami. Yeah, what, what's the schleyback pate? I suppose that's some sort of seaweed as well, is it? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll go for the soup and the wakami burgers, I think. Uh, I'll go for the soup and the still spread and the Yeah, it's kind of food, food of the gods, really. Um, even though to taste it, people don't think that because it's quite a strong flavour. Um, but it, it contains all the nutrients, all the minerals and vitamins um, compared to most of the foods that we eat. So it's great for anybody recovering from cancer or radiation pollution or if you have toxins in your body, it's great to release toxins from your system. Um, so basically, it's, it's full of all, all the goodness that we need, basically. Um, what was that like, Ian? Um, it was really good, yeah, yeah. Um, it was pumpkin, but what's the wakami? It's in the kelp family. It grows uh, where there's, it grows at the bottom of the tide, or below the tide, um, in broken water where there's surf and rocks, and so it's difficult to get. And it's long wings. Yes, we're using seed as one of the um, the uh, covering substances along with horse manure just to um, kind of mulch the ground and keep moisture in and, and the worms will come up from the bottom and take the nutrients from the, we just put it on the top layer and the worms will come up and take what they need from the horse manure, from the seaweed and they'll go back down then and, and do their thing in the soil. Um, for harvesting um I use a uh, currup, which is a traditional Irish boat uh, that's still used on the Aran Islands to go backwards and forwards to the mainland. And it's um, it's uh, and it's very useful for the um, for a work boat because it draws um, a tiny amount of water, useful for getting to places at low water or uh, getting high up the beach at high water to unload and um, with a big outboard motor on the back it goes fast enough to cut down the travelling time in the big uh, spread out area that we uh, harvest um, and furthermore it can carry a huge payload um, of seaweed um, back to the farm They were big strong guys and yeah. really healthy you know no. You'd only be tough if you were paddling a curve around <laughs> It was life and death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're forgiving, you know, you couldn't. Yeah. You know. Okay. So they lived on the, they did just really live on the edge, you know. Yeah. And a grey mist on the sea's face. 
had a great dawn breaking. What incredible, incredible vitamin Well, it's one of those foods that contains almost all the um, nutrients we, the body needs. Um, it's one of those foods that's very easily to forage for without getting killed. Um, and there's no poisonous, there's no poisonous species. It's one of those foods that there is no poisonous. Um, so you don't have to be worried and looking up books and wondering is this one safe and is that one safe. All of them are edible, all of them are full of all the nutrients that the body needs. So uh, I think that's why it's been called Food of the Gods. Yeah. By late May the Ilari harvest is all over because when the sea water temperature goes above 10 degrees the fronds start to deteriorate. The sea is like a huge unbelievable melting pot of millions of things invisible to the naked eye floating around in it which are all spawning and waiting to grow and so the tricky thing with fertilization is to isolate the variety which you want to grow. Freddie Omani has um, achieved a high degree of success at growing Alaria esculini um, or uh, double ox um, to some people and um, that's, that's, that's the uh, thing that we grow in the uh, Roaring Water seaweed farm. By late May the Ilaria harvest is all over because when the sea water temperature goes above 10 degrees the fronds start to deteriorate um, and become all dog-eared and um, then um, so I don't uh, I won't be going out again until September October time when the plant is in its reproductive phase. When we pick um, any seaweed um, I always carry a knife with me and cut the plant rather than pulling the whole fast off the rock so that it can regenerate and grow again. The first time I went out looking for the plant at this time of the year I couldn't understand it because the plant that I recognised was not to be found because all the fronds have disappeared and only the, the base, the reproductive organs at the base of the plant are there to release their reproductive spores. So we go out and we pick these plants and take them to the laboratory where uh, by manipulation of the temperature the uh, biochemist is able to release the spores and um, they are male and female and achieve fertilization. 
Um, the most important thing in the laboratory is to maintain strict um, cleanliness because the sea is a living soup of millions of different microscopic um, entities and you'll end up growing all kinds of weird and wonderful things so it's necessary to filter the seawater through uh, UV filters and um, and achieve a degree of sterility so that you only grow the species that you want to grow and not a uh, myriad other forms of aquatic life. Um, after about two months um, the uh, seeds have um, been in impregnated onto string um, and grown big enough, tough enough although they're still microscopic uh, to the human eye, to transfer out to sea. And um, the way this is done is um, the string is wrapped around a cradle, which we take out to sea on our boats and, um, and to the seaweed farm, um, which consists of 100 metre long lines. And we wrap the we, we pass the long line through the cradle and, and pull it along the long line, unraveling the string on a spiral around the long line. And, um, and this is done in before Christmas. And then um, we, uh, we leave the farm, um, uh, go off on our holidays to the Canary Islands, and come back in um, spring. We have to um, we have to mill the seaweed because seaweeds are very um, tough stuff and uh, you need um, very good teeth to deal with the uh, raw product. So um, for the vegan burgers and sausages um, we make in our kitchen, um, I mill it into granules and um, then it's easier to chew. But it still has like a nice uh, fishy, um, meaty texture and a delicious taste. Of the stranger sea, among our words, our love in peace. 
Yeah, I helped Pod collect some of this seaweed uh, around the island a few weeks ago. And he was very fussy about collecting really nice, clean, fresh. Mm. So it goes really well with the sauces and the potatoes. Is it Maybe these ones will survive. Maybe they were secretly eating seaweed. <laughs> There's over a hundred islands in uh, Roaring Water Bay and a lot more rocks and reefs for the unwary um, needs careful navigation through the channels. So, But this is ideal ground for seaweed and um, with the Atlantic tides we can go out at low water on the Cora and collect uh, all the indigenous um, varieties of sea vegetable um, which grow here. And Paul, are there protected species there in the bay as well? All seaweeds protected. Um, the marine environment, um, you need a licence to uh, collect commercially. But um, by cutting the holdfast with a sharp knife, leaving the holdfast intact, cutting the plant uh, several inches um, above the uh, stem, we allow the we allow the plants to regenerate and we can go out month after month and crop them appropriately and sustainably. So is that what you do with the, the wakame that's on the ropes? Do you go out month after month to harvest it? In the case of wakame, the um, wakame grown from spores, we just harvest it once because after uh, April it deteriorates. It would be possible, I believe, to uh, keep cropping it. Uh, in the case of uh, kelps, we had some success with that. But uh, for the wakame, after April and the sea goes above 10 degrees, then it's finished. So we just harvest the lot uh, in one go. until, And then we leave it until uh, we have to find some wild plants on the foreshore to collect the spores in the fall. Here we are in the last glimmer of daylight, a slight uh, tint of uh, rose in the mountains over the sheep's head on a smoky October evening and growing on the rocky seashore. All around us we see the black gold of the sea, sloke as the uh, locals call it. Laver in uh, the west of England and Nori to uh, the Japanese. As the tide comes in, as you can see it lapping the beach at the moment on a beautiful calm evening, pick the Nori 
as the tide washes over it and you will avoid all the pebbles. If I pick it here like this on the dry stony beach it's full of grit but I'll put this down and I'm going to walk down to the water's edge where the tide's just coming in Now, without getting my feet wet, I'm going to pick some here. And as I pick it, I just wash it in the tide that's lapping around. This um, Prince of Sea Vegetables, Nori, which is a wonderful addition to your uh, fresh food in the winter when all the other vegetables are dwindling away. Um, super rich in protein, I think the richest of all the sea vegetables in protein and a wonderful all-round uh, mixture of minerals and vitamins and to boot this is delicious. If you learn how to cook with this, it's uh, one of the most delicious sea vegetables to be had. Leaving the uh, nori behind, we're uh, walking over a bed, beds of serrated rat. Wonderful for your, uh, for your baths. Um, if you take some home, dry it if you like, and um, put it in a, an old um, net from your lemons or oranges that you buy in the supermarket and put it in your bath and it'll give your skin a wonderful um, tonic and leave it uh, with a nice silky complexion. No need to go to boots for this. It's uh, all around us one of the most common of um, sea weeds. Here in front of me is a bit of sea lettuce which is like, if you like, the green nori. Again, a delicious thing to be eaten as a salad, but try to pick it fresh when it's green and succulent, as it is um, one of the few seaweeds that can have microorganisms that, aren't, that don't agree with our systems. <laughs> Seaweed's been used for, for thousands of years, mainly I mean, the Japanese have been using it, I suppose, more than anyone else. I think it's just catching on in the Western world now. Um, I mean, the Japanese have been using it, they use it for breakfast most mornings um, in a miso soup form. But I think people around here now are starting to, to catch on to it and because a lot of people are a little bit afraid still just to go out and find their own food. It's not something that they've been used to doing, but I think we're going to have to do a lot more of it, kind of finding our own foods. This is carrageen moss. And what do you do with this? Basically it can be um, put into some milk with uh, vanilla pods, uh, brought to the boil, strained um, and then um, mixed with egg yolk and it makes an actual um, milk pudding like a creme brulee um, and it's great for the lining of the lungs and now's the time to be nourishing the lungs so it's great to, to nourish that. As, as a child I was ran around the house with a spoon of this every winter. <laughs> I'd run a mile. <laughs> a little bit of sugar and a little bit of olive oil and lots of ginger um, and lots of molasses. Is that with cake? Um, yeah, yeah, nori. Nori again. Yeah. Yeah. Seaweed, it's the, basically it's the most nutritious form of vegetation on the planet. Um, it's free, 
um, and it contains all of the nutrients needed um, for the cells of the body to, to function at an optimal, optimum level. So if the cells are functioning properly, then the rest of the body is going to be functioning properly. Oh yeah. Hi Chris. Is it, is it you're picking some tomatoes? This is the last of the crop. They're coming to the end of their season now. So uh, it's a great crop this year. We've got grapes growing over here. Yeah, we've got loads of grapes. Um, yeah, so they grow very well here. I love a bit of seaweed and not too much water. Um, they, they grow well in a drier climate. So you don't have to overwater them. So. It's a great um, aid for anybody who's got any sort of degenerative disease, whether it be heart disease, high cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, um, or um, if you've been diagnosed with cancer. So it's best to get it local um, and to make be sure that it's from a clean beach and a clean source. So if you're not a fay yourself with uh, the best places to get it, um, you're better off getting it from someone who does. Um, either in the health food shop or from, from someone who's like Paul who's growing it locally and harvesting it locally. Um, it's great to help with your, you know, as a kind of complementary um, kind of medicine if you're on uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Um, it can help with the side effects of the treatment. Um, but it's also great as a preventative. So people really should be eating seaweed as part of their daily diet or weekly diet. So if you can manage to have one and a half cups to two cups of seaweed a week um, as, a, as a preventative for any of the degenerative diseases, um, that's def definitely, there's been research to, to, that's kind of shown that. Um, it's also great for um, keeping the um, acid alkaline balance in the body good. Um, our acid, a lot of people, are, their bodies are too acidic and there's a huge link between that and the genital diseases, especially cancer. So um, if you are eating seaweed on a daily basis, it can help to keep that in check. Basically the acid, um, we should be eating probably 20% of our diet should be acidic and 80% of it should be alkaline. Um, and stress is very acidic. So if you're working in a stressful environment or a person who gets stressed easily, um, definitely you should be watching um, your acidic foods and, and reducing them. Um, so seaweed is great um, at kind of balancing out your acidity in the body. So um, early April, um, the crop's ready to harvest and um, since Christmas it's been growing and um, we uh, each uh, metre of uh, longline will yield about seven kilograms of uh, golden fronds which we cut off with a knife and load into the corok in fish boxes to take back to the drying tunnel. And it's also great for people, anyone who's pregnant. Um, there's recent research showing that it can improve the cognitive um, development of the baby in the womb. Um, so very good at, at balancing your hormones. For anyone who's um, hitting menopause or has any other hormonal um, conditions, um, seaweed can be, can be great to help that. Um, weight loss, basically seaweed, it's one of those, it's, it's the most highest um, nutrient dense food on the planet and it's one of those foods that contains practically no calories. You can eat as much seaweed as you want if you're on a calorie restrictive diet. Absolutely delicious. The pumpkin soup was fantastic and the, and the bread with seaweed in as well. What type of seaweed in the bread? Dulusk, is it? Dulusk. Delicious. Yeah, delicious. Highly recommended. If you never tried it, you must try it. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. And what about you? What did you think? I had really enjoyed my starter with the soup. It had a lovely flavour and great kind of texture with the seaweed. And a great taste of the sea. Delicious. Thank you. I was just saying that the nori with little shrimps is fantastic. It's really yummy. Right, the whole thing is really nice. Yeah. I mean, that's 
I haven't tried it yet, I'm going to, I'm just about to... Um, <laughs> Not bad, but I say so myself. I walk along the empty beach, smile to the wind and feel free. Plunge down into the depths of the ocean and feel at one with the sea. Swimming from rock to rock, never knowing when I'll stop. Swimming from rock to rock, from the bottom to the top. Like the ocean 